and my corporate portfolio. Cor corporate portfolio. Portfolio. What's up everybody? Today I want to share the secret of how I make $8 million a day in passive income as a photographer and if you pay me to do it, then you can too. Let's dive in. Hey everyone. So there is no one size fits all solution to becoming a full-time photographer or a videographer. Every market is different and everyone's path is different. Uh, I've been doing photography and videography for about five years as my only source of income and I thought it may be helpful to share with you a bit about my journey and how I ditched the nine to five and started to feel alive. I got my first camera when I was 18 or so that I purchased with my Mick money that I earned from a certain burger chain that will not be named because they're not a sponsor. And uh, the reason I got a camera in the first place was to take videos of myself playing guitar and singing and put them on YouTube. Aw, oh, gross! Now, I was in bands at the time and so this was an easy transition. I could take my band's pictures and videos, which weren't very good at the time. Um, and I would bring my camera to all of our shows and take pictures of other bands, which led to me getting to do some small paid work for those other bands as well. Now, that's when I stumbled across a new sexy, sleek, hot love music videos. You won't know that I changed my mind a couple thousand times. I watched lies escape you like a guard that bribed. Got too many feelings. I don't want to feel them. They won't leave me. However, uh, local music videos don't pay very well in the area that I was living in at the time especially, so a full-time career in music videos didn't seem to be in the cards for me. Um, not that I had ever considered doing photo video as a career at the time either. Uh, I wanted to be a successful musician, and um, here I am, famous. As uh, the years went on, I completed business school, Hello. as that was the practical option, uh, all while living in my hometown. I continued to take photos and videos for bands, and I must have watched hundreds of hours of YouTube videos on how to improve, different tech tips, lighting techniques, and I just felt this growing love of improving my images and honing my skills in this aspect uh, that I would bring my camera everywhere with me and would hunt down new locations, try new genres of photography, videography, all that kind of stuff. Now, for whatever reason, I was afraid to move away from my hometown for school or for anything for that matter. I had a lot of roots in my hometown and they really helped me in place. I always loved to travel though, but living in the same place I grew up, which was a smaller city, really held back some of my would-be success in photography and videography. One thing to understand that I've learned is that where you're living really does dictate the market of opportunities that you'll have, not just in photography, but in life in general. Larger cities will have more competition, but also more opportunity. And so, you know, keep this in mind, just depending on like which kind of genre of photography or videography you want to find yourself in and how big of a part of your life you want it to be as well. For me, being in a city near mountains and ocean now has really opened a lot of doors for me both in my hobby, photography, and professionally, as my passions lie in the camera and nature. Now jumping back to little university Josh, Hello. after Mick leaving my Mick job uh, partway through university, I got a job at a Canadian bank. And uh, boy did it pay well compared to my last job, and boy did it give me a ton of anxiety. I worked there for four and a half years and I hated every, every day every day. I got into a cycle where I felt really anxious anytime I had to go into work and um, I'd stay in bed as long as I could until the last minute and then I'd get up, drudge my way into work hoping to get delayed by a train or, or hit by one <laughs> on the way in. And it was at this time uh, the idea of becoming a full-time photographer videographer would pop its tiny little head into my big Big, big head. So at this time, I had been shooting for a few years now and the product I was putting out was 
Fine. I also had made a lot of connections that would help me with my journey to leave my full-time employment. I was hungry. I was driven. And uh, I spent a lot of my precious small amount of free time uh, improving my art, doing free portfolio shoots of different kinds, low pay work, really like anything I could get my hands on and spending a lot of time late at night editing, practicing, evaluating my work, just seeing like what can I be better at. Learning photo and video was really smart in my journey because it did open a lot of opportunities, especially with video, which was primarily how I sold myself at the time. And to be honest, was how I sold myself in transitioning out of my job as well. I found it a lot easier to break into the market as a videographer because people and businesses have usually less confidence in their own abilities when it comes to video in creating a story, shooting, editing, all that stuff. And there's more of a need for videographers than photographers in most markets, in my experience. So at this time in my job at the bank, I did start to work part-time with an events company um, between jobs and I would do their photo and video stuff for larger festivals in the area while helping with the setup and teardown to make some extra cash. The stability of the income from my bank job along with the benefits was really nice and I was caught up in the golden handcuffs of corporate Canada. <laughs> Approaching the end of uh, full-time employment, I was working at the events company, had joined forces with a local music studio that wanted to focus more on the video production side of things, and I had shot a few weddings for a low fee with a photographer friend that also worked at the bank with me, and I started to advertise my own weddings at that point as well. I was shooting some music videos, some small business videos, had built up like bit of a nest egg to help with the transition. It was hectic and felt like a lot of grinding. I felt like I didn't have a ton of like actual time for things like sleep or R&R. Um, &R. Also, you can't put a price on happiness and I was extremely unhappy at the bank. Life is too short for that. And luckily my life expenses weren't like so crazy uh, at the time. And at that point, I just finally quit the job that I hated. After that, I continued to work with the events company for about a year while continuing to build up my wedding portfolio and my corporate portfolio and my corporate portfolio. Cor corporate portfolio. Portfolio. Uh, it was at that time uh, becoming apparent that a change of scenery was necessary to take things to the next level for me in my life and uh, career and I moved across the country about four years ago to push things in a direction that was a bit more in line with my passion for nature. Uh, being in the mountains absolutely fills my cup whether it's hiking, mountain biking, skiing, all that stuff. I am obsessed and I've been able to integrate a lot of that into my branding um, pretty well such that most of my work involves me being in nature too. My work has come a long way and boy are my arms tired. <laughs> uh, it's been a long journey. I've made a lot of mistakes and uh, I basically had to start fresh when I moved uh, because I literally knew no one uh, when I moved across the country. So all I had was my hometown party farm Liar. And so I was back to doing uh, some like free and kind of low paid shoots to build up my new portfolio, uh, showcasing some of the more local locations meeting people, sending out emails, advertising on Google was helpful. Um, maybe I'll do another video on how I grew my business uh, from scratch again. But for now, uh, this concludes my story on how I became a millionaire at the age of 20. Thank you, and um, I'm not a millionaire, just, just to be clear. Um, but maybe one day. Bye.